And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with much power and majesty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This Sunday, my dear faithful, marks the end of the liturgical year. We begin next Sunday, of course, the new liturgical year with the first Sunday of Advent. There are many reasons why the church today places the gospel which relates of the last judgment and the end of the world at Mass today. For at the end of the year, it is fitting that we should think both of the end of our own lives, which will one day come, and also of the end of the world at large. The liturgical year is so structured as to represent not only the entire history of our salvation, but also the history of the entire world. Thus it is that we have four weeks of Advent to symbolize the 4,000 years of longing expectation in which the human race waited for the coming of the promised Redeemer. In the feasts from Christmas to Pentecost, we have an account of each of the principal events in the life of our blessed Lord, his sufferings, his passion, his death, his resurrection, his ascension into heaven, the establishment of his church, and the beginning of the work of our sanctification. In the Sundays after Pentecost, which we might say are a symbol of our own lives, the time that we spend on this earth, Holy Mother Church gives us many parables and instructions in the weekly Gospels until finally today she concludes the year with the account of the Last Judgment. The reminder that not only shall each of our lives one day come to an end, but also too the world shall end and the world shall be judged. To think of the last judgment is very beneficial to us. The Catechism tells us that there are three principal reasons for which there will be a general judgment. For some might think that when we die, we are already judged. At the moment of our death, it shall be determined for all eternity whether we shall spend eternity in heaven or in hell. That is our particular judgment, which takes place at the very moment of our death. Why then must there be a general judgment of the whole world at its end? The first reason is so that all men must recognize the wisdom and the justice of Almighty God. How often do we not hear people complain how the wicked in this life seem to prosper, while those who struggle to be virtuous struggle to get by at all? We see, it seems, many good deeds going unrewarded, many wicked crimes going unpunished. And thus at the last judgment the whole world shall be shown the wisdom and the justice of God. That on the one hand even the slightest good deed did not pass without its proper reward. While on the other even the least sin must be punished with the punishment it deserves. All the good that is done shall be rewarded. 
all of the evil which is done shall be punished. And the whole world shall see also the wisdom of God, in that God makes use even of the wicked designs of men. He permits their evil in view of drawing from it a greater good. Thus, for example, had Adam and Eve not sinned, there would be no suffering and death of Christ on the cross, no great fortitude and virtue of the saints. Had there been no wicked pagan emperors, there would be no martyrs of the Colosseum. And thus the wicked persecute the just all throughout the history of the world. But yet God will draw from that persecution a greater good than we might imagine. And thus the whole world will be shown both the wisdom and the justice of God at the last judgment. Secondly, the Catechism tells us that there must be a last judgment in order that the whole world might give to our blessed Lord the glory which he deserves. So many men throughout history refuse to believe. So many men throughout history reject our blessed Lord. Like the mob on Good Friday, they cry out, crucify him. We have no king but Caesar. And thus, at the last judgment, the entirety of the human race will acknowledge the divinity of Christ and that he is the redeemer of the human race. For the just, this will indeed be a great consolation. For the wicked, a source of great torment. But the whole world shall indeed recognize the kingship and the divinity of Christ. There at the last judgment, he shall be vindicated before the entire world. His enemies shall be conquered forever and his friends brought to, to share in his eternal glory. The third reason why there must be a general judgment is so that the good should receive the honor which they deserve for their good works, while at the same time the wicked shall be put to shame as they deserve for all of their vices. As I said, so much good seems to go unnoticed while the wicked seem to prosper. At the final judgment, our blessed Lord will show to the whole world the value of each of the good works which we have done in our whole lives. Those things which go entirely unnoticed or misinterpreted or even considered to be wickedness, the foolishness, the world would say, of the saints, that they endure persecution instead of fighting back. All of our good deeds shall be brought to light, shall be shown to the whole world. And all of the merit that we have obtained by them. So too will all of the penance that we do for our sins be shown to the whole world. As the reason perhaps why even one who has committed many or terrible sins still is placed among the saints for the sincerity of his repentance, for the charity with which he loves God, the effort that he makes to amend his life, to do penance and to grow in virtue. The just, therefore, will be glorified. Finally, before the whole world, will they receive the honor that is their due. All of their good deeds shall be recognized. All of the deeds, too, of the wicked shall also be recognized. 
those sins of which no one else is aware in this life shall be manifest publicly before the entirety of the human race as the cause why this or that soul must endure the torments of hell for all eternity. It is well for us to consider this, to meditate upon this, for this is a strong motivation to us to avoid temptation and to flee the occasions of sin. We would never flaunt our sins in front of our friends and family for shame, for human respect even. But our sins, should we persist, will nonetheless be publicized to the entire world at the last judgment. And the whole world shall echo that the sentence passed upon us is indeed just. For it shall also be shown all of the graces that we receive, all of the graces which we spurn, in order to persist in a life of sin. The whole world will see that the just are saved because they cooperated with the graces given to them by God. The wicked ultimately are to be condemned for they repudiated the many graces given to them by God. Graces which would be more than sufficient to number them among the saints had only they been faithful. As we reach the close of the liturgical year, let us consider our own mortality, that we shall one day be called before God to render an account of our lives. Let us prepare then today, begin today, to do what then we would have wished to have done so that with the just we may hear those blessed words of our Lord. Come ye blessed of my Father, enter into the kingdom that is prepared for you from the foundations of the world. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.